describe her, but I'm going to be anchoring the show with a very beautiful personality. And she goes by the name Adako. Watching you, Mary. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming to the show. I really, 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 really appreciate it. You're welcome there. <laughs> Guys, for you to know more about her, before we start and before we can start on today's show, we're going to be going on a very short break. We'll be right back. In case you're just joining us, this is Entertainment World right here in the studios of RSTV. Remember I said that my program is not just about entertainment. I'm also here to inform and educate you. But before I start my educative part, let's talk about my guest. She's coming all the way from Silverback Television in Osaka. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're looking at you right now. So just Hello, Paula. That is always exciting that you could open up your home and welcome us. Hmm. It's such a privilege and honor that we can grave your TV screen every single time. So thank you for having me on You're the welcome. show. welcome. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here too. Okay, yes. guys. Now we are moving on to the main content of the show. And we are going to be starting with the educative part of my program, which is my Did You Know segment. Yes. Did you know that lobsters have a clear or colorless blood? Hmm. In case you don't know, their blood is not red. <laughs> they Did have you? a new... Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> their blood is clear. Colorless. Oh, really? That's when they're in water. But when they're being exposed to oxygen or okay. heat, their blood turns blue. Mm. Mm. So in case you don't know, as you can see on your screen, the color of that blood you're seeing now is blue. Yeah. That's because they've been exposed to oxygen. Okay. They've been brought out of the water. In case you don't know, lobsters, they don't have red blood. They have a clear or colorless blood. But when being exposed to oxygen, their blood turns blue. blue. That's on my educative part of today's program. Yes. Have you learned something? I have. I didn't know that. I <laughs> love didn't that. know too. <laughs> have blue blood. Yes. I'm when exposed, exposed to oxygen. oxygen. I yeah. didn't know that. Okay, that's it for my educative part. And I'm going to be moving on to the informative part of the program, which is my entertainment gist of the week. Giving you a rundown of things, significant things that have happened in the entertainment industry from Sunday up until today. And I'm going to be starting with Regina Daniel's husband, Ned Woko, who is a senator. Senator Ned. Yes. Yes. While he was mourning the death of Nigerian musician mm. Mobad, he said he was going to introduce a bill that will make it mandatory nationwide to conduct an autopsy for a specific time before anybody can be buried. That's a very important bill. Okay, absolutely. And because I most times people die. You just hear this person has died. You don't even know the real Especially cause. Especially if the cause of death is mis mysterious. Mysteri yeah. Like this true. young man's born. And a lot of uh, um, drama surrounding the yeah. death. So I, I think that would be very helpful. And I think yeah. also, which is doctors that conduct the autopsy, you know, most of them they are being paid to light. Okay. So I think that should be checked. That should be okay, checked. Okay, there should be another body yes, that checks that. that. Checks that. Okay. To avoid corruption, because there's corruption everywhere, anything can happen. Exactly. You might just hear he died from uh, maybe BP or something, something. And once the doctor signs it off. That's it. So maybe a double of <laughs> second opinion could help. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Cool. So Senator Ned Woko has said he was going to introduce her bill very soon. Let's watch and see what he has to do. And then secondly, on my entertainment gist of the week, I have the Lagos State Police Command. They have stated the reason for using tear gas on protesters who were having a peaceful protest as regards to who died. Who died. You know these protesters on Thursday night, they had a candle night um, stuff for mobile. And this yeah, and these protesters you were used tear gas on. Now the Lagos police, PRO, which is Benjamin Nigeria, that's that's the man's name. The man has stated the reason for them using tear gas on these protesters. And what's the reason he said? He said he had an agreement, or they had an agreement rather, with the organizers of these protests that they shouldn't get to the lucky toll gate to avoid what happened during the end sacks to repeat itself. But some of these protesters went there 
And what happened? They had to use the tenders on them to be able to disperse them. That was what he said. That these protesters violated their agreement. But they shouldn't have. Agreement is an agreement. And of course, they now kind of, uh, they were trying to politicize yeah. uh, Mubad, and which should not have been. So, although I do not support using force and violence yeah, on using, yeah, citizens, using the but out, for so. them, they shouldn't have. Yeah, no, okay. so, yes, that's what I would say. Okay, that's what the Lagos police has <laughs> said. <laughs> now, moving on to the next gist, we have Chloe Kardashian, which is from the Kardashian's family, American presenter Chloe Kardashian. She has finally opened up on her skin, cancer, recovery, and journey. Remember that last year, this lady had a very little tumor on her face. And this tumor, she, uh, she saw this tumor as maybe a pimple okay. or something, or, mm. or an acne, but she never knew that that tumor was a very harmful and cancerous tumor. And she left it. After some time, it began to disturb her, and she found out, her doctors found out that that tumor was cancerous. And then she has come on social media to thank her doctors and also urged fans to always check on their body. Whenever you see something on your body and you know that that thing is not normal, mm. go to the hospital and find out mm. because you don't know what that thing might be. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. It's just a reminder of what they talk about, uh, health check. Yes. Regularly yes. check your check body. Your How well, you know, most of people health. say, now who they find sickness, they go to the hospital. It's not always no, like that. It's not. Yeah. It's not. It's not. Yeah. Because we eat a lot of things. Even our environment already keeps you at risk. Yes. So it's important to regularly check the state right. of your health. So she has told us mm. that we should always check our bodies. Now, lastly, we have the husband of Nicki Minaj, known as Kenny Petty. This man has been sentenced to 120 days house arrest by a California judge. Why was he sentenced? That was because he uploaded a video on social media threatening Cardi B's husband. That's the other, the other guy you're seeing on your screen. Cardi B's husband, Offset, that's his name. He threatened him and made some certain statements like Planned up vacation, you're going to be planning your funeral bitch, and all that, and all that. Mm. So, this statement, he also said it, he didn't just say it, he said it with someone who has a criminal record. He was not the only one in that video. The other guy he was with, that guy said he has a criminal record. And then the court has sentenced him to 120 days house arrest. So, he wouldn't come out of his house. <laughs> For what oh, what no, 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 like what did the guy do to him? I don't understand. It's, there's always beef. I know there's this beef between Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Yeah, it's, it's going yeah, to be there yeah. forever. But why would the man <laughs> involve himself? That's my problem. So I would have played that video on air, guys, but he used a whole lot of F words, F mm -hmm. words, F words, so I didn't want to play that video. Because okay, there are several reactions on social media, some so, so hilarious that when I start to <laughs> watch them, I mean, read them, I'd be like, people are crazy. And even when, um, Cardi B responded, okay, um, can you give me like made a post and then Cardi B responded, they say we don't talk to bitches. Why are they, why are they <laughs> always fighting? I don't get it. These two ladies are bosses. Uh, like, they, they are bosses and they are African women. They are representing their clown, hmm. you know, but so, the interest, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, guys, that's <laughs> it for my entertainment gist of the week. I hope you were educated in my digital segment. I hope you are also informed as I gave you the gist of what has happened in the entertainment industry, both home and abroad. Now I am moving over to my segment, hey. my discussion and my gist segment <laughs> with my guest, Adaku watching in Mary. Once again, I welcome you. Thank you very much. But the name is Dr. Adaku oh, watching in Mary. I was, I was yeah, getting right. to that. <laughs> I was getting to that, guys. Guys, guess what? Guess what? Yeah. Guess what? Hmm. Should I say it? Say it. <laughs> <laughs> say it. She just bagged a doctorate oh, degree no. in 
Vegas State University. A round of applause. I'm sure your our fans are, are clapping for you right now. Oh my dear. See, let me tell you to be very honest. I want to be like you when I grow. Oh. I'm still doing my masters. That's oh. fine. But I want to be a doctor like you. You can be. Uh, if you've done already two years in your master's program, one yes. year in your master's, yes. another one year you are gone. So devote another three years, you get your PhD. <sighs> That is the minimum. <laughs> <laughs> and if you go to another university, there's another university within the system here in Port Harcourt. Yeah. You can do, actually do two and a half years. Wow. If you're very fast with um, mm -hmm. if you're very fast with uh, research. Because okay. that is the only that's thing that's gonna thing. keep yes, you. Yes, you know. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so please we are listening to you now. I want just what you've been I think in the in entertainment industry for five years now, working with Silver Bear. Yes. How has it been like joining school? And work because I'm very sure maybe when you started your master, when you started working there, let's say for five years now, and how has it been you mixing school and work? And what we do is my focus is on not just the show production, we just mm -hmm. make the shows and do it, mm -hmm. and then any other thing is not my business. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but the, 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 the exciting thing is that yes, you can actually merge everything together. It's all about getting your priorities right. right. They call me television presenter, mm -hmm. like you. Yeah. TV host. Yeah. Now I don't just host TV shows. I host live shows. I do host red carpets, events, okay. and then I cover events and I do all of those things. And you still go to school. And I still go to school. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is, is bringing out time okay. for the things that matter to you. Okay. What are the country? What are the things you want to contribute to your society? How do you want to live better your life? How do you want your life to be better? So when you are able to outline those things for yourself, you are able to like, okay, these are the things that I need to do to ensure that I achieve those goals. My dream has always been to be a doctor, a medical doctor. Wow. But when I, a lot of things happen, maybe in another time I come up to tell you my story deeper, okay. when a lot of things happened, I decided to go academic. Now, so looking at this school, <laughs> how, like, you know, most times we hear the lecturers frustrate students, mm -hmm. they make sure that they delay them, they don't graduate. You see, you hear them, when they want things from you, you don't give it to them, you hear that you will stay in this school, all those things. Like, how did you manage to pass through all of that to get to where you are? Okay, um, I started school in 2018, 19, 2018. Okay. My first undergraduate was, I finished, I did it on a part time basis. So I would go to school and work in the morning, and then in the evening time, I would go to school for, I did that for five years. So at 2013, I graduated. I didn't spend one day outside my five years calendar plan. Then in 2015, I picked a master's form. I spent two years. I didn't spend a day outside of my plan. And in 2018, I picked up the master's a PhD form, all right? So but I spent an extra eight months because of the bulk of the work. Mm -hmm. PhD is very tasking. Yeah, I know. You understand? Yeah. So our coursework is like two years, one year plus, two years, 18 months. So by the time you are done with the coursework, you need to do a lot of um, research and then package your yeah. work, which is mandatory for you to be offered. So lecturers are not really disturbing you. No. What I'm trying to say is, <clears throat> if you are fast, if you do what you are supposed to do, mm -hmm. lecturers will not keep you. And perhaps University University, we are blessed with good lecturers. Yes, if I you could are attest good, to that. Yes. I could attest if you are a smart that. student, if you are a serious you'll student, be noticed. you'll be noticed yes. and they want to help they you. They want to help and you. And yeah. a lot of those, my lecturers, we are so outstanding in several ways. Okay, let's say, use my PhD for example. I have my professors, Professor uh, Fred and Maddie. Okay. Guys, talking about this, <laughs> Professor Fred and Maddie, yes. I have a video. This man uh, is one of the most. He's one of the most, uh, I don't know how to put him, but he's a very hard nut to, to crack. You need to be really smart. You need to impress him very, very well before he would notice you. If, no matter how intelligent you are, Professor Fred Amadi would not notice you. But you, you need to be extraordinary <laughs> for Fred Amadi to notice you. Now he said something about my guest, Adam from watching in Mary. Okay. And I was really, really impressed. And I would love us to watch that video. Let's listen to what he said. Watching a Mary, my ex-students, you, you, you were very brilliant while you were there. 
you break all the glass ceilings and uh, you will even Amen. ascend to the highest of the heavens Amen. in your dreams. Amen. You have what it takes. Amen. You have the gravitas. That's the much I want to say. Sir, what's your name, sir? My name is Professor Fred Apadi. And what's my name, sir? Your name is uh, Nwachine Mere Adako. Yeah. <laughs> That was my professor, one of my best lecturers. He's a very prolific scholar. And of course, one of the most nicest of us. Someone is the wrong god, but it's very, very funny. Eh? Yeah, so. Guys, I watched this video and I was impressed. Like, for Professor Fred Amadi to say something about her. <laughs> like I always say, the only thing I have to say right now is yes. I want to be like you when I grow up. You, you, you need to be serious, you need to read, you need to really read, I'm you, need to, you need to turn in your papers when you are supposed to. And then I have Professor Richard Amadi. Yeah, he was yeah, another, 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 another member yeah. supporting. He was yeah. one of my project supervisors. Okay. He was very su supportive. At some point, they would make copies of some of yes, your work and give to you. And right? give to me to go and use it and I may fine tune my work. I have Professor Serica. I know some people don't like to work with him, but he was so, so nice. <laughs> it depends on how close you are with no, it's not a function of being close. It's a function of that. So what I think that lecturers do is when they see a student that is ready, ready and to, serious, yes. somehow they find a way to support the person. You understand? But when they notice maybe a certain level of unseriousness, you say you will bring your work today, you are bringing it one month after. Okay, so guys, you heard that. For you to get close, <laughs> you have to be serious to just study. Yeah, you don't absolutely. have to complain that this lecturer doesn't like me, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Are you going to class always? Do you learn? Do you read? Do you take your test and like, assessment seriously? Exactly. That's another question. And hey, just, just like that, Professor Okon is another person. Yeah. All these things like that, like that. If you are able Some to do that, go to university, university, they will, will not understand. Like but I'm just telling you the kind of lecturers <laughs> that have been so supportive of my study over the years, past 10 years, I've been in university, university. Hmm. Because all my studies were done in that institution, you okay. know. And I can say that the university, university has changed my life. And hmm. the lecturers are one of the best, one of the best in the world. I cannot even mention, oh, is it Dr. S uh, Dr. Hakkot White? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, to Dr. Sila That's my supervisor. He's, he's your supervisor. He's, he's Dr. Hakkot. Hmm. Hakkot White. Fire, fire. See, <laughs> you heard that man's name is Dr. Yeah. White. So that's, that's the lecturer we're talking about. Oh, yeah. So lecturers can be one of the people that can give you a springboard yeah. for the next level. Yeah, they can also help you, thank But yes. mine helped me spread. Yes, it depends on how serious you are. You are. Yes. Okay, yes, moving over to, still we're talking about you. Oh my yes, goodness. My, my, <laughs> my guest got an appointment hmm. by last lot. Odua, you must say. Odua. This man is a very, one of the biggest Hollywood directors. He was the one that directed this movie called Isakaba. Hmm. Yeah, and other movies too. But that was, that's one of the most popular movies he has directed. And most recently, he has done a uh, Bege. Okay, Bege is also a hot, a hot movie. Where some day they came was part of the lead, uh, lead uh, yeah, actor. In fact, last year they did a movie premiere here in Port Harcourt. Okay. You know, after the Port Harcourt, they did in Lagos, they did in Abuja, they did in California. Wow. So it was a very big movie. <laughs> and this man has <laughs> appointed her. Yeah. <laughs> you know, last lot, last lot is, um, is 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 a very big character mm. when it comes to. Uh, the, the movie director, space. Yeah. He's someone that uses uh, cameras, equipment to create stories that are so stunning, so inspiring, so exciting, and he's gotten global, global, global accolades from all <coughs> over the world, you know. And recently they were asking him because he was on our show two months ago, okay. and we were asking him, What is it that you want to leave as a legacy? He said, at the end of the day, I want to be remembered for the impact I have yeah, created. Yeah, and not just on the people in the but to also young people. Hmm. Now, what he has done to do that, he has created a platform that will give uh, uh, the young people, especially students in training, the kind of experience that big actors have. But at a very starting spot, what did he do? He created a film festival called International Student Film Festival. festival. All right? Yeah. So yeah. he didn't stop at that. This festival is going you know, to be moving from school to school. This year, um, so from the 26th to the 28th mm -hmm. of next, uh, October, October. it's going to be held in Okada. 
that is the Canadian University. Okay. Then next year, another school can post. We see that he has actually done so much. He has done a lot. Okay, since he has been giving accolades, <laughs> let's give our own accolades. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Moving on to what we have, um, I think you said your show. Yeah, we have basically basically deal on promoting Portacot access. Yes. Now, looking at the Portacot entertainment industry, we see that in Port Harcourt, most of our celebrities, they start from here, but they end up going to Lagos State to continue, or going to Lagos State to get the whole limelight that they yeah. want. What's really happening in the entertainment industry in Port Harcourt? Like, why is it that we can't have an industry as big as where those people are running to? Like, one the day. first thing I could say about that is environment. The environment is not conducive. On the individual levels, it's just a few people that are interested to support the craft. You understand? Mm -hmm. And those who do support over time, they begin to lose interest because they don't have other people acknowledge. And we what see that there's so much talent in Port Harcourt. Yes, that's so what. much talent. That's even that's not even something because I've listened to some of my friends who are like upcoming artists. Mm. These people they sing so well, even if not singing in acting. Everywhere we have artists, those that draw and all that, they do so well. I don't really know why for her cause, but I, like it's best final the basic thing is lack of government support. But there's no we industry. Have to, we have to keep doing our job. We like, have by to do them, project, yes, them, project, project, project. For us here, what we do at our station is we have a show called Full Circle, Monday to Friday, ten to eleven. Every Friday we promote entertainment. And who are these entertainers that we promote? Yeah. Music yeah. artists, yeah. producers, directors, uh, artists themselves. Yeah. You do films, you do uh, music, anything that you do, we promote them. And over time, we realize that there's a lot of raw talent, untapped potential. And these hey. guys are so good. They are so ask good. Me, why <laughs> are they not? I mean, why do people? I mean, why are they not um, as big as they should be? Except they leave the city. The environment is not conducive enough. The real state government needs to Sorry, do please, more. Not, not for your anger. <laughs> I'm not for your anger. I am saying that these guys need to be supported. They are so good. Don't I feel worry, so sad. The real state government. It's not the real state <laughs> government. It's not okay, the guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Ada, for watching Imeri. Thank you guys for being a part of this program. We hope you had fun. We hope you were educated. And we hope you, you gathered some points on what we discussed. Okay, guys, I think we have to draw the cutting. Yeah, I really had so much fun being here. Thank you so yeah. much. If you were a guy, I would have told you to chop up. I guess you chop up left or right. You're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being a part of this program, guys. We hope you were entertained, we hope you were educated, and we hope you were informed. Thank you. We hope to see you at the same time, same station next week. I remain a girl, Mavis Victor, and I have. Dr. Adako. Mm, Dr. God. <laughs> I want to be a doctor soon. Thank you guys. See you next week. We love you, but God loves you more. Bye bye. <laughs> Don't walk it, don't try, try. You supposed to be jai jai. Kill up, come, it come, pessim, I don't pessim, we don't mind.